we've come to this beautiful beach in Denmark for a very special kind of speed challenge. SUVs are struggling with their public image at the moment. They're seen as climate killers, gas guzzlers, and polluters. But at the same time, they're more popular than ever among car buyers. And this is the muscle car among the SUVs, the 550 horsepower Porsche Cayenne Coupe. Its fuel consumption weigh more than 10 liters per 100 kilometers. Our car tester Gina is convinced it'll beat all comers in a straight sand sprint. This power Porsche has all the DNA of a Porsche. Just one example, the seats reminds me of the old 911 Porsches. On the other side, you might think about it if you need 550 horsepower and a lava orange color in front of your horse. But the good thing is everyone can decide this for himself. If you're going to thrash around high-powered SUVs, you need to come to a place like Strand on Denmark's west coast. Yes, the Danes let you drive here. Of course, the beaches are more crowded in summer. We have two beaches here in the municipality. There's a couple of beaches further up north and on the islands of Rømø and Fenu. And the reason we choose to do it is because we don't want to have big parking spaces in the nature, natural landscape behind the dunes. So we prefer to, for the cars to drive onto the beach uh, because then we don't have to have these big asphalt uh, parking spaces in the landscape uh, and we can keep the landscape as it is naturally intended. And the second advantage is that elderly people, handicapped people, uh, people with special needs, they can get onto the beach as well. So that's also an advantage. And it's perfect for our traction test. Okay, guys, we make a speed acceleration challenge now. And we have the Porsche, it's just set for the final. But we have four other cars, and they will fight against two groups. We have the Audi electric car against the hybrid Lexus, and the diesel Volvo against the diesel Maserati. And the winner of those groups will fight against, and the last has to fight against the Porsche. And then we have the winner. Okay. What, what should we do with all these driving systems and, and uh, assistance in the cars? Should, should we switch them off or let, you do them, let me do them in? And I would say you can do them as you like. Uh, if, you, if you think it's better to, to let all the systems in, let them in. Well, let's, let's go. go. Got it? All the other cars have to do battle. Only the Porsche is already set for the final. This is the Lexus RX 450H with full hybrid drive the fully electric Audi e-tron, the Volvo XC90 mild hybrid diesel, and another diesel, the Maserati Levante. First up, the Volvo XC90, the first real SUV from the Swedish car maker. Our tester Nico has just one issue with it. For a few uh, days, I'm driving the Volvo XC90. Um, it's a very comfortable car. Are very nice to drive. All the assisting systems are supporting the driver very well. The only thing I wondered about were the fabric seats in the car because when I thought of a premium SUV car, I thought about leather seats. But this is a point where everybody can decide for him or herself. The Maserati has all the comforts, but isn't quite cutting edge, says our Italian tester, Fabio. What I really like about this car is the exterior and the interior. Especially this wonderful leather materials, this beautiful blue paint job. What I don't like about this car is that some technical features should be standard in a car of this price back. Um, as an inductive charging station, a head-up display and a virtual cockpit. Can the Volvo Mild Hybrid take on the powerful Maserati? Okay, Nico, are you ready? Have you select your systems? Yes, I'm ready. Everything is fine. Thank you. Okay, Fabio, did you activate your systems? My systems are turned off. Everything is ready to race. Ready, steady, go. The Volvo's traction control gives it the advantage against the Maserati. Fabio, what was happened with the car? I think turning off the systems wasn't the best idea because I was uh, the tire was spinning at the start, at the beginning, and I wasn't able to get off, off the line quickly. So um, there was my big problem. 
and so the Maserati is the first to leave the beach. In production since 2016, the Levante is in high demand, accounting for half of the Italian luxury brand's sales. Now it's time for the Audi e-tron to show what the VW Group's first all-electric car can do. Our tester Jochen was truly impressed. I'm driving for just one week this Audi e-tron and I have to say it's very comfortable, very silent and all the digital tools inside are learnable very quick. The problem is the charging infrastructure. Sometimes you have to wait one and a half hour to get it full, but that's normal. You have to think a little bit in a new world, but it's possible. Its challenger, the Lexus, also has an electric motor and a V6 combustion engine. Our tester, Christoph, says power is not the point here. I have to confess, I'm a Lexus fan from the beginning on. Also, these cars are not perfect. For example, all these entertainment systems, this navigation system, the handling of that is ooh, ooh, and the hybrid drive is not made for German autobahn. But on the other side, a Lexus always gives you the feeling of safety. This, this car protects you every day, every hour. Only one example. You have the, the lower door blades are much lower than in, in other cars. That means they protect this part of the car and that it's not going to be muddy or water on. And so your trousers will be clean all the time. Hybrid drive versus e-power. The result is clear. The Audi beats the Lexus. No argument, right? Yeah, normally I should have win because I'm the better driver. The torque of the Audi is so huge, I had no chance. And so the Lexus is the second to leave the arena, beaten by pure power. But for all the electro euphoria, hybrids like this will still be around for a long time. Now it's time for the semifinal. Audi versus Volvo. Who will get to face off against the Porsche? Once again, there's no doubt about the outcome. Power wins out once more. The Audi's 664 newton meters of torque is simply impossible to match. The Volvo is out, but its mild hybrid has a future. Its fuel consumption, well under 10 liters per 100 kilometers. Modern diesel engines can be cleaner and more efficient, as long as they are electrically assisted. Time for the final. The big showdown on the beach in Weierstrand. Can the e-Audi overcome the 550 horsepower Porsche Turbo? An excellent start gives the Cayenne a few meters lead, which it holds on to until the finish line. More horsepower, more torque, and 400 kilos lighter than the Audi makes the difference. The e-tron has met its match in the final. The first electric SUV from Audi is a first-class touring vehicle but it would be a much better electric car if it didn't weigh 2.6 tons. Its battery alone weighs 700 kilos. So the winner is the Porsche Cayenne Coupe Turbo. But this incredibly good car has a breathtaking price. While the other four SUVs cost around 100,000 euros fully loaded, this Porsche comes in at a whopping 180,000 euros, at least in Germany. At that price, how could it have lost on Weierstrahn? What if all SUVs were emission-free? They could run on hydrogen, for example. <laughs>